time to fight fear with faith. Jody Parr is a survivor who is no longer staying silent. She and her guest will fuel you up so you too can fight fear, uplifting and inspirational stories that will rock you to your core. We don't tiptoe around the truth. We steamroll it in a bold way. This is your life, and now is the time to start living it. Get ready for the Faith Over Fear podcast with Jody Parr. Now, welcome Jody Parr to inspire you. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Faith Over Fear. My name is Jody Parr. I am super excited that you guys are all joining me back again for another episode. We're on episode 17. Like, that is super exciting for me to be on episode 17. So we're going to go ahead and actually today I'm flying solo. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And guys, I just want you to know that as I tell you my true story, it's not always been easy for me to tell. Matter of fact, I kept this story from everybody for a very long time, including my own mother, who I am very close to, um, did not know my story for 23 years. My husband didn't know my story. Um, you know, so it was a matter of whenever God said, okay, it's time that I told my story. So I want people to know that it wasn't something that um, I just decided to tell. It was in secret for a lot of years. It was buried and blocked for a lot of years. And so that's something I just want to let everybody know as they're listening to it. And I thank you guys for listening to this podcast and to my true story. I'm going to take you back in time. Um, when I was 18 years old, I was very rebellious. And I think a lot of teenagers are rebellious. You know, I was raised in a very Christian home. I went to church every time the doors opened on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesdays. My family was an amazing family. We were raised in a very Christian atmosphere. I knew who Jesus was. I had heard all the stories growing up. And so the thing about it is, is I was very rebellious because when we see people, other people, sometimes we compare ourselves to them. And I, my dad was so strict. And so it was like, if, if you wanted to date, I have two older sisters. If you wanted to date us or go out with us, my dad literally had you come over and sit in front of him and watch a movie the night before. And then he would sit there and clean his guns. God rest his soul. He would. And, um, <sighs> I miss them so much, guys. But, uh, you know, it was so intimidating because it was like, hey, if you want to go out with me, then I got to tell you, you know, my dad is going to have you come over and, you know, he's going to clean his guns and he's going to ask all these questions. And I just thought it was like so uncool, you know, because everybody else's parents weren't like that or, you know, they didn't, they just let you go out. You know, they didn't like watch over you carefully. And so it was like that whole rebellious thing that came out in me. And so my dad always said, and I know a lot of you will definitely probably relate to this too. Um, as long as you live under my roof, you will obey my rules, right? Oh, I used to hate that so much because I was like, oh, as soon as I'm not living under your roof anymore, I'm going to be who I've always wanted to be and I'm going to go and I'm going to do and I'm so excited. And, and so what happened was uh, whenever I reached 18 years old, I walked out like birthday cake on the table, walked out. And I was like, now I can be who I've always wanted to be. And I went to live with my aunt and uncle and they lived in um, about 30 minutes away and they lived, um, you know, they were Christian, but they weren't as strict as my mom and dad were. So it was like, I knew I would have some freedom living there. It wouldn't be a matter of everything that I did being monitored. And so I started to uh, get excited. I, I moved in with them and the one rule that they had, which I totally understand was I had to get a job. Like I get that. I had to pay some rent. I had to help out. I'm 18 years old. And so I ended up working at, you know, some different jobs and I was applying for all kinds of jobs and I ended up getting a really, really good job that I was very excited about. And so when I started working there, um, I all of a sudden like just felt freedom, I guess is the word, excited, uh, on my own, paying my own bills, making my own money. It was kind of like, see dad, I told you, look at me now kind of thing. But that changed. I was about, I was working there probably about three months 
and a really, really good looking guy came in. And I noticed him instantly and I was at that age where you don't feel like you, you look in the mirror and you see every single flaw instead of seeing the beauty in yourself, you see a lot of flaws in yourself. And so I was very insecure and he walked up to my desk and I about fell out and I was like, oh my gosh, like you want to talk to me? And I was, you know, the receptionist. So of course he wanted to talk to me, but like he wanted to talk to me. And he started to tell me how gorgeous I was. And he started to tell me that, you know, he's always wanted to be with a Southern girl and just like pouring it on thick. And I was 18, naive, naive and stupid. And I was very sheltered from the world. I did not know evil existed. And so he asked for my phone number and I gave it to him. And he called me instantly. And I was so excited that he called me y'all like, I didn't think this guy looked like he walked off a GQ magazine would ever call me. Okay. I was overweight. I was insecure. I was a high school dropout. I was all the things that a guy this good looking would never go for. Right. But I was, but he called me and he was so nice and he was so sweet. And we ended up talking for a long time, like literally until the sun came up. And I thought, wow, like I could never do that with my dad. Like he would have done unplugged my, my call after an hour. And this is so awesome that I can just talk to this guy all night long. Well, he traveled out of town. He was a business guy. He was a lot older than me. And so he was like, you know, I'm traveling. I'll be gone for a while, but I just want us to continue talking. And of course I was like, yes, like he's so gorgeous. Like, of course, you know, and then he started to check off all these boxes that I'd always wanted. You know, he was very successful. His family was super close and he knew I loved horses and he had a ranch with all these horses on it. And, you know, it was just, he was just painting this beautiful picture that I had only dreamed of happening. And I ended up falling in love with this guy, like really did on the phone, end up falling in love with him. And we talked several times a day. We talked all night long and we talked for three months straight. And after three months, he told me he loved me. He was falling in love with me. I was on cloud 100 and I was like, I am falling in love with you too. I'm so happy. I've never been so happy. And he's like, I'm going to propose to you. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to be in like any proposal you ever dreamed of. And he would just like make my world complete. Right. And we had been talking for three months when he told me he loved me. And then the next phone call was he was coming to see me. I cannot begin to tell you guys how excited I was. I was on top of the world. And I had kept this secret, I hadn't told anybody about it, because he said, you know, it's best if we keep some things between each other. And honestly, I didn't have anybody really to tell, because I was kind of isolating myself, moving to a new place, and I didn't really know anybody. And so I ended up um, being super excited that he was coming. And he said, I want you to wear a pretty dress, I want you to look amazing. And I was like, I'm so, so excited for you to come, you know. Well, it was the day that he was coming and I had my black dress on, my pink heels on. I looked amazing and I was getting ready to walk out the door and the phone rang and it was him. And he said, I'm sorry, baby. I'm running really late. Flight's delayed. And he said, but my best friend, and he's actually my bodyguard. He wants to pick you up instead. For a split second, y'all, I was like, but I don't know him. And he goes, but you know me and, and you love me and I love you and I got to see you. Like we've been talking all this time. Don't you love me? Don't you miss me? Don't you want to be with me? And I was like, yes, 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 yes. But guys, honestly, I was like fearful. And by him saying, don't you trust me? I was like, yes, I do. Like, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to move with you. We're going to live in, you know, with this big house and this big branch and yeah, of course, of course I trust you. So I said, oh, wait on. I thought this guy was the guy of my dreams and I thought that this guy was Mr. Perfect, but this guy wasn't. This guy was a human trafficker and he just sold me. And the person that was gonna meet me in that parking lot who I thought was his friend and bodyguard was actually the person that kidnapped me at gunpoint. 
when the blindfold came off, I was in front of a very old, run-down, beat-down motel. Fear covered me. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet covered me. I was forced into that motel with a gun to my back. And very horrific things happened to me. I was 18. I was a virgin. By the grace of God, I escaped not only once, but twice. And the details of everything that I went through, and I do mean details, are in my book, Boss, behind me, which stands for Breakout Silent Soldier. You can get this book on Amazon. You can also get it off my website, which is Jody, J-O-D-Y-P-A-A-R.com. Because I want to talk about fear now. I want to talk about fear because from that moment on, I was absolutely paralyzed by fear. I was imprisoned in my own mindset by fear. It went from me being a person that could just go to the grocery store with no problem at all to a person that couldn't even get out of the car at a grocery store, a person who couldn't even leave her own house because of fear. I ended up being on the run for a long period of my life. And all of those demons of the past followed me in fear. And guys, what I want to say to you today is when people say fear, they say it's false evidence appearing real. But to me at that time, it was very real. I really believed I was going to be kidnapped again at any moment. I really believed that I was going to be killed. And again, you have to read my book to know the story and how it turned out. And you guys know I'm here today, so I made it. But what I want to talk to you about is how I overcame fear. And the only way that that happened was by the grace of God. You know, growing up and listening to church and listening all about Jesus, I had no idea the power that was in that name. Because it took me 20 plus years later to let go of that fear by giving it to him. Maybe your fear is different than my fear. Maybe your fear started as a child and someone came in your room and they shouldn't have. Maybe your fear was in an abusive relationship, been there. I actually was in an emotional and abusive, physically abusive relationship. There's a lot of fear that comes with that. But I'm here to tell you the one that breaks chains and the one that can take away that fear is Jesus Christ. And that is what he did for me. I went through evil. I went through the worst kind of evil imaginable. And I held it a secret for a long time because the enemy wanted to keep me paralyzed in that fear, in that unknowing, in that place of imprisonment in my mind and in my body and in everything. People I met, I had so many triggers. People talk about triggers. I had so many triggers, cigarette smoke, trigger. Cars, different types of cars, triggers, good looking men, triggers. A certain type of laughter was a trigger. There's so many different things that comes with fear. But I'm here to tell you today that God can take all that away from you and he can give you the life you've always dreamed of. The enemy is a liar. Fear is a liar. Fear will tell you you're not good enough. Fear will tell you that you are stuck where you're at. And that is not true, my friends. That is not true. Fear is something that wants to hold you to where you are right now. That wants to remind you over and over again of what you went through. That's why for the longest time, I couldn't even speak of this. I had best friends for decades and they didn't even know. My husband of 10 years, he didn't even know. Nobody knew until God started waking me up at three o'clock in the morning and saying, it's time for you to tell your story. And I thought, what story? I have a good life. I'm happy. 
why do I want to go back there? I, I don't want to talk about that. But God was like, it's not about you. It's about who needs to hear your story. It's about who needs to be set free. It's about who's living in fear and needs to know I can take it from them. Whew. That was a spiritual spanking. But that was so just humbling. It's not about you. Yeah, you're afraid to step on a stage. Yeah, you're afraid to write a book. Yeah, you're afraid to do these things, but it's not about you. How many lives can you touch by being obedient to what I'm telling you? And guys, that's why I wrote my book. That's why I stand on stages. That's why I do podcasts. That's why I do everything that I do because I don't want you to live the way I lived for so many years of my life. I can't get those years back. But I can tell you by the grace of God and by having faith over that fear, now my life is completely changed. I will tell fear you are a liar straight up to your face. You're a liar. When those thoughts come, I will rebuke them and I will redirect them. I am a new person, a new creation and what God's done in my life. See, the enemy wants to tell you things are impossible, and I'm here to tell you absolutely nothing is impossible when it comes to our God. Nothing. See, his son conquered the world that we may be saved of our sins. I mean, y'all, if y'all look at the Old Testament, there was some crazy stuff that happened, and there were sacrifices that had to be made, and Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. So if no one's even told you about him, if you're like, who is Jesus? You know, I just, I've heard of him, but I don't know. Let me tell you who he is. He is the one who breaks off chains. He is the one that can set you free. He is the one that turned my life around and can turn your life around. From wherever that first bit of fear came from, usually fear can come from somebody overpowering you. I know what that's like. But when you know that all power comes from God, ooh, you are untouchable. You are on fire. There is nothing and no one that can touch you because you know you are covered by the blood of Jesus. I do a lot of different guests with a lot of different stories, all different stories, all different stories, all different, you know, walks of life, but all come back to that same thing, that same freeing. And guys, you know, I want you to know that there's nothing too shameful, too dirty, too ugly. He already knows about it. And he still wants to take you and make you clean. And that is a thing that the enemy does not want you to know. See, when we go through fearful things like I went through, I went through years of things I was not proud of. And I don't say ashamed anymore because I'm a different person now. I was very ashamed for many years. I was very just beat down is the word. Beat down is the word. I was so beat down and now I'm so free. And it feels amazing. I don't need drugs. I don't need alcohol. I don't need partnerships and different faces who continue to treat me badly. Another lie of the enemy, I would never meet anybody that would ever want anything to do with me because of my past. And I am married to the most amazing man in the whole entire world. Can I tell you all that? There's so much that can be taken away that you guys may be going through. And I want you to know that. Stop living in fear. I love the fact that in Proverbs, it talks about being clothed in strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. That's what that says right there, my, that sign right there. Because until you're imprisoned in your, your mindset and your body, you don't know what it's like to laugh without fear of the future. All you do is fear the future. All you do is fear what's going to happen next. The enemy told me I wouldn't live to see 22. I ain't telling you my age, but let's just say I'm past 22. <laughs> Guys, I want you to find your joy and happiness in God and let him change you, turn you around. Stop letting the enemy use your past to just destroy your future. Give it to God. Give it to Jesus. I do breakthrough prayers that are so powerful. They're so powerful because that's what I went through. I had to for a change to take place in my life. 
And so if you want to know more details, you can go to my website, jodyparr.com. Again, I keep plugging that in there. Um, but guys, I appreciate you watching today. I pray that my story and what my testimony is touches you in some way that you're like, I'm tired of carrying all this. I'm tired. There was a lady that came to me after I did a book signing um, in New York, and she was late into her 70s and had been carrying something that happened to her when she was four. See, that's what the enemy does. He, he makes us think there's no other way but to live with that, but to be a prison of our own body, a prison of our own mindset. And I'm here to tell you there is freedom waiting. I will bust out my song in a minute. <laughs> There's freedom for you. So guys, thank you so much for listening and for watching. And I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. No, you're not alone. The enemy wants to isolate us and make us think that nobody else has been through what we've been through. But there are others that have. There are others whose stories will just rock your soul. There are, store, there, there are people that you're like, how are you even walking around today? I had a lady tell me, you have like nine lives. And I'm like, I am covered by the blood of Jesus, honey. I don't know how many lives I got. But as long as I have purpose on this earth, I'm going to be here. So I want you all to know that too. You're created for a purpose. Each and every one of you are created for purpose and have purpose in this life. So I want you guys to know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Guys, please know that you can also have faith over fear. It doesn't have to control you. It doesn't have to be the only way. Oh, because there is so much freedom waiting for you. So my name is Jody Parr. Thank you for watching. You can find me online, uh, social media at Jody, J-O-D-Y-P-A-A-R uh, dot com is my website. Jody Parr on Facebook, Jody, uh, the Jody Parr on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, but I really don't tweet that much. I should really tweet more. Um, so yeah, look me up guys. And if you want to share your story on my podcast, please send me a message. I would love to have you. Um, and it's important that you get your story out there. Don't be ashamed of your story. Your story is going to inspire somebody. It's going to help somebody. And it's important that we have a voice and we speak out and we don't fear. Because fear is a liar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.